Hi, and welcome into Music Fanimal here on Fanimal Radio. I'm Tony Lombardi, and this week my special guest is Jimmy Charles, straight in from Nashville. Jimmy, yeah. welcome into the program. Thanks for Good to see me. you, man. Yes. So we got together because we reached out to each other on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He's got a song that's a really terrific song that I know our listeners and audience is going to like, Back to Baltimore, which we'll play in the last segment. So yes. I'm looking forward to that. So we, we started talking about that. It's a terrific song, by the way. Thank and you. one thing led to the next, and here you are. Here I am. So, so, I'm so you got, you got a town. gig tonight. I do, at the Cancun Cantina right. in Hanover. Um, and then tomorrow, what I'm really in town for is uh, we are doing this the summit for Zero at the End of Prostate Cancer, which I'm the national spokesman for. Um, that's, that's my cause. charity work, absolutely, prostate cancer. Men don't like to talk about prostate cancer. I'm out there you know, being a voice and telling men they, they need to get checked. So I right. um, <clears throat> wrote a song called Superman that has been huge within that community. It's, a, it's the story of a survivor. I wrote it with a survivor. And uh, it really brings the message of early detection for, for men to get checked. And, <clears throat> you know, so we not only is Zero an, an amazing organization that um, educates people um, they have funded people that can't afford a lot of their treatments. They have a program that they, they, they will fund them. Um, and also millions of dollars have been put towards research and we have a, a lot um, better treatments now because of that. So, uh, But we also go to, every year we have a summit and we're going to be in D.C. on this week. Um, and we will talk to legislatures and state representatives and bring the, uh, the importance of, of cancer research and, and try to get them to spend more money towards this cause so we can finally just get rid of it, you know? Well, like you said, awareness is really key in learning and education. So where can people go to find out more? What, you know, is there a website? Sure, zerocancer.org. Okay, simple you know, and they have um, they have walk runs. I'll tell you uh, while, while we're we kind of jumped right into it, but um, the, the the story was I was just uh, I was just um, you know said hey I'm gonna want to help you guys out and um, I'm gonna sing. They have walks and runs all across the country. So I had some friends here at Chesapeake Urology, and that's the biggest race. They have about five thousand people, and um, then they they called me up and said hey can you write a song that will encourage men to get checked for prostate cancer. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, you can imagine the thoughts that are going right. through my head. But um, it, it ended up being great. I, I had a cancer survivor come to Nashville, sit down in a room with me, and I said, just tell me your story. I was like, what is it like, you know, to get that news? You know, he's in, he was, and he is that story, man. He's just a, Phil Schulk is his name, just in great shape, kids, wife, you know. How's he everything's doing now? Going. He's, he's good. He's good. He's good, you know. It's a, it's a continuous battle, but... Um, you know he's going to be there with us um, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. So um, great guy. And it turns out that he actually went to high school with my father, which why we had no idea until we started talking. And he passed away. My father passed away and while you, I was you singing You met this. him in Nashville? No. Uh, but I met him through Chesapeake Urology. Okay. So okay. He, he's a mentor for them. So when men get... Um, just find out. He goes to their bedside and he gives them their phone number. Say, call me anytime. I don't care if it's five, four, five o'clock in the morning. You know, I've been through it. I can do it. You can do it. Here's what to expect. You know, helps them because it's it's like getting hit with a shock grenade. Right. You know. So um, he told his story. Uh, my father passed away while I was singing the song in the studio. So that's why Superman is the name of the song. The video that we made um, premiered with CMT and has reached out to millions of people. So I'll be singing that, you know, with the, uh, the, we're having a pep rally, the whole band's coming in from Nashville, and we're gonna put on a big party, and then we're gonna go storm and lobby for, um, for additional funds towards cancer research. That's a great cause. Yeah. But let's yeah, talk about you a little bit. Sure. You had your upbringings on the Eastern Shore. Talk about living Ocean City, down there in Ocean Maryland. City. Ocean, I, I, what a great place to grow up, you know, just crabbing and fishing, and, uh, you know, Ocean City, I mean, the beach, you gotta love it, man. And uh, I try to get back as much as possible. It was difficult for me to, to pick up and, and leave, um, you know, my friends and my family. But, um, you know, I wanted to pursue music, and that's where you got to do it, you know. Right. So um, did you play in clubs and bars down in Ocean City? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and I still do. Any you know? particular favorites? Um, um, let's see. You know, we do a, every every Fourth of July. I play at a Castaways RV Resort. Okay. Which is just a little place, but all the so all, everybody's RVs are, are about there, and they have cabins. That's on, in West OC, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they just have a little stage right there on the beach, and everybody comes down. You can see the fireworks. So we put on a show, and then the fireworks go off. Nice. And, um, that's always a fun time. There's lots of places that I love, and I, I go up to Dewey Beach also and play 
um, you know, Hammerheads. And then, you know, we'll do big shows like um, I just opened up for Josh Turner in the convention center down there. And there's talks of doing some other big things that I don't want to say until it's we've got the, the contracts. In, but so it'll be big and little shows and uh, always try to get back as much as possible. So in between the crabbing and the fishing and the hunting, somewhere along the line, music sparked an oh, interest yeah. in you. And how old were you when that happened? Uh, my dad put my first guitar in my hand probably when I was 13. Okay. You know, and um, of course he loved he loved country music, old country music, George Jones, uh, Merle Haggard, you know Willie Nelson and things. So I was learning. My first songs were the, all these old traditional country music songs. That's where I really fell in love. Of course, I you know my friends weren't listening to those types of songs and well, on our way to school or anything like that. You know they didn't even know who those people were. Right. So, uh, but that was a great bonding time for us, and uh, that's where I really found my love for for country music and be able, being able to tell a story in a song, which is you know, what I love, and I think country music does that best. So would you say that those guys you just mentioned, Merle Haggard and whatnot, the Georgia Joneses, were they your influences or were there other people? You know, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily see that in my music now, okay. um, but it, you know, I'm a country rock guy, you know, and um, you know, I love Tom Petty and um, you know, Leonard Skinner, and I love like the Southern rock, um, Allman Brothers and, um, you know, Springsteen and, and things like that. And then you kind of combine it with, with country music. And country music has, has evolved so much from those, those days. I couldn't really come out with a George Jones type album, but um, you know, certainly those, those guys are my idols. It and, seems to me, because I haven't been a big fan, not that I'm opposed, but haven't been a big fan, but it seems to me that the real difference is just in the delivery of the vocals. I mean, a lot of the other stuff sounds the same. Right. Except it there is. might be a banjo in there, maybe a steel. Yeah. Where what's the guitar where they slide? Yeah, like that. slide guitar, sure, yeah. pedal steel. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, and then, um, you know, I, I love the fiddle. It's one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I've got a, an amazing fiddle player, Marie McGlone, and uh, she'll be she'll be there this evening and, and tomorrow. So I, I love coming to the shore and bringing um, just having that aspect, having a fiddle, because you don't see it. Yeah, you know, you, when you're down at those honky tonks in, in Nashville, the girls are up on the bar playing. And it's that's, fun. That's what she does. So, yeah. but you don't see that a lot in Ocean City, which is it's yeah. cool. And the the level of which she can play and how fast her fingers go. And I mean, you play something like Devil Went Down to Georgia, and she just knocks it out of the park, and everybody just loves it. You know. Yeah. So, I was watching. I think it was the CMT Awards or a show like that. Maybe it was one of these awards where they were honoring the women in country and country mm -hmm. music. And Cheryl Crow was on. She was introducing Maren Morris. Mm -hmm. And when she was introducing her, she said, she wrote the song I wish I had written in my mm -hmm. church. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, is there, have you ever heard a song that you like so much? God, I wish I had written that because I've had those thoughts before. Yeah. Um, you know, the first one, that there's tons of them, first of all. But I think one of the first ones that just pops into my mind is Buy Me a Boat. By Chris okay. Jansen, yeah. because uh, the cool thing about him is he played downtown where, you know, that's where I got my start as well. I used to play 12 shows a week downtown, you know, doing doubles some days. And uh, a truck to pull it, right? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And, I was, and, and, you know, that song sprung him. And, you know, uh, that's, a, it's, that's a really great, fun song to play around here, too, with all the boats and things like that. So, so speaking of playing some songs, your first one's going to be this one you just mentioned, I Am Not Alone. Absolutely, yeah. So, so I'm not alone. Is um, it's it's an anthem for cancer survivors. Um, I uh, have, you know, through my journey with uh, with Zero and with Superman, I've had so many survivors that have confided in me and just let uh, and just say they they thank me constantly. Say, you know what, I was keeping to myself, and um, I thought I had to beat this on my own. I thought I had to be Superman. You know, in the song in the song Superman, it says, you know, no one's Superman, which you don't necessarily want to tell a cancer survivor, but the idea is that a lot of them, especially men, they think they, they have to do this on their own. They don't even tell their, their fam a lot of their family members and things. So can you imagine, as horrible as cancer is, having to deal with it on your own or thinking that you've got to be this superpower person? Um, so it's opened so many uh, doors and just so many people have just opened their hearts up and let me know how much it has meant to them. And um, I wanted a like a just an anthem song, you know, for them to be able to uh, to sing along to. Superman tells a story. I'm not alone is kind of, uh, you know, the next level. And it's just you know, just let them know they're not alone. Absolutely. You know? So you're gonna play. I'm not alone. If I could, yeah. I'd like to dedicate it to a friend of mine who okay. just found out that he has prostate cancer. This goes out to Jimmy Kirby. I'm 
only 17 Shouldn't be happening to me Should be going to prime football games If there's this disease I'm 35 I just got a raise Just clothes on a two-bedroom Cape Cod out on that lake Feels like these walls keep closing in and There's no telling what's round the bend Scared of death To say the least But I am not alone I will stay strong And I won't have to do this All on my own Love care this torch This cross I bear Fighting spirit still right here Cause I ain't ready to go home I am not alone I am not alone I'm a mother Two crazy kids Still got a job And bills to pay Can't sit around here Crying all day 63 I got the news today these golden years might be cut short and that's not okay Feels like these walls keep closing in There's no telling what's around the bend Scared to death, to say the least But I am not alone I will stay strong And I won't have to do this all on my own Love care, this torch, this cross I bear Fighting spirit still right here Cause I ain't ready to go home In the dark of the night with the demons there I got angels that still care Right beside me till this battle's won I am not alone I will stay strong And I won't have to do this All on my own Love care, this torch, this cross I bear It's fighting spirit still right here Cause I ain't ready to go home I am not alone I will stay strong And I won't have to do this All on my own Love care, this torch, this cross I bear It's fighting spirit still right here Cause I ain't ready to go home I am not alone I am not alone I am not alone So I am not alone great song Jimmy thank you great job so talk about your transition from the Eastern Shore mm -hmm. to Nashville. What took you there? Well, besides well, the obvious, yeah. <laughs> I mean, our music absolutely. But yeah. it, Nashville is such an amazing, an amazing city. It's like the it city now. Everybody's moving here. We're almost like, okay, guys, stop, you know, stop moving here. But because uh, it it has grown so much since has it created some infrastructure there. issues oh, down there? Oh yeah. So yeah. you know, th our traffic is getting way way worse than it used to be so um, it's still nothing compared to Baltimore or DC or anything like that but I just remember I was like wow this is it's got all these big city amenities but it's so easy just to get around this town now that's starting to starting to slow down so but um, you know I don't know it's it was exciting it was nerve-wracking you know I left my family and friends that was the biggest thing is you change your life you know it's not a vacation it's you know you're okay I'm actually gonna do this it's like jumping off a cliff and hoping the parachute opens, right. you know what I mean? So it's, um, and uh, you, you gotta stick with it. And, it, and you, you can't just be like, hey guys, I'm here for music. Well, everybody is, you know? You gotta be a part of the community and you gotta work and you gotta, um, you know, build relationships and, and things like that. So nothing's gonna be handed to you. It's a tough town, but it's a, it's a beautiful town. I, I certainly would not be the artist that I am today without, you know, the people that have influenced me there, the writers, um, the musicians, the ability to be, to play 12 shows a week, you know, where when I was playing in Baltimore or, you know, in Ocean City, it was the weekends, you mm -hmm. know, maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe a Sunday, possibly, but uh, when you play that much, you know, that's how these guys get so good, because they're, they're just constantly playing, so I've learned so much from them, and, um, 
you know, I think the, the biggest, I've always loved music ever since I was a kid. I told you when I was 13, I started writing some of my own songs, but I never really believed in myself that I could go out and make a career. Uh, you know, in a life and be able to support a family through music, you know, because it's, it's very difficult. But I tried out for a show called um, Nashville Star, and there was 45,000 people that auditioned. 45,000? Yeah. And, um, man, I made it to the, to the, all the way to the top 50. So I, I went through all these different rounds, and um, they only take eight people on the show, but that's where uh, Chris Young and Miranda Lambert both got their starts. So... Um, and just seeing the, the way they looked at me, and, and I was just like, wow, if I put my heart, really put my heart into it, you know, I might be able to actually do something. And another thing is I, I wrote a song for a friend of mine who, uh, his brother passed away, and they have a, um, a big party that they, they have out in the woods somewhere, and there's hundreds of people there, and I wrote a song just for, for him to remember. It's, it was called Live On. And uh, I sang it in front of everybody, and it was dead silent. And this was the first time that I performed a song that I had written, and I just I fell in love with what I call the light of music, because the way people were just looking. You know, of course there were tears, but there dead were... silence while you're playing. Right. Not yeah. after you were finished. No. no yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, no. It was it was just an emotional moment, man, and and, and um, it made me fall in love with music. You know, it was like the, the, there's music has such a, an amazing power. To, to touch people's lives. And I wanted to be a part of that, and I wanted to see it and feel it, you know, again and again. It's, it's like when I saw that, it's like, you know, this isn't about me. This is about, you know, being able to touch someone's lives and, and make it better. So that's, that's what, so I was like, I was sold. I was like, all right, psh, let's go. So I, I had like a couple hundred bucks in my pocket and packed up my stuff and said, Mom, I'm out of here. And how long ago was that? Uh, Ten years now. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. So now I travel all over the country and out of the country sometimes, and um, you know have an awesome get to do what I what I love every day. So is it one of those things when you look back and you say it's been ten years? Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it feels like a flash, and in a lot of ways, it feels like a long ten years. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, when I say it, it goes by fast, but when I really sit there and like look through my timeline on Facebook and be like, wow, I look at all these things that. That's why, you know, sometimes I think we all just, everybody, you know, time just goes by. The days go slow, the years go fast, you know. Yeah. And uh, we all kind of have to sit back. And that's what, I, that's what I learned to do because, you know, in Nashville, I was like, all right, I'm doing this, but I, I want to do this. I want to do something bigger, you know. And, you're, and you, you, instead of enjoying, I had to, one, just step back and say, I've got to enjoy. Like, look at this moment that I have right here. Look, I, look at the show that I get to do right here. Who cares about anything else right now? Let's enjoy the moment, the people, right. the amazing people that are around me. And that's not say, oh, you know, I, I, I need to do a bigger show, you know, somewhere down. You're not even, you're not present in the moment. So that was, that was definitely something I had to, to tell myself. So you, speaking of shows, you're doing 12 shows a week. Do you do the honky tonks along Broadway, or where do you play mostly? Yeah, well, that that's what I used to do. Thank okay. God, I do not have to do that anymore. Now, you know, um, I travel all over the country. Um, I wrote a song called uh, "About Summertime," which is a, you know, a lot of influence from Ocean City. There, you know, it's just a fun summertime song, and I got asked to headline a big festival in. Um, Brewers Bay Beach in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Nice. Have you ever been to the Virgin Islands? I have. It's beautiful. They are beautiful, and um, it was. When, so when cool. is that? Well, I, I, this is what I did previously. So okay. this was about three years ago. I did that, and it was right on the beach. And Prior to the big storm that swept through there. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're back though. Good. They're back, but. Um, yeah, the band came down there. JetBlue flew us out, and we had all these sponsors and um, put us up in a Belongo Bay hotel and uh, we played beach bars all leading up to this big festival and then we recorded a, a music video called about summertime and it plays still after three years um, plays in margaritavilles all over the country and, and all the um, if you ever go to nashville um, the artists are putting their names on all these different honky tonks now like you got jason aldeans and luke bryans and dirk bensley's and um, you know, they all have one. It's like the new thing. But they also play, they have a big screen. They play um, are they music just videos. donating their names or are they actually own the places? They own the place, but, you know, I'm sure there's a corporation behind it, right. you know, and right. they slap their name on it. But they'll, they'll make appearances, you know, and come down there. Um, and you could just be walking down the street and then all of a sudden, I think I did. I was on my way to one of my shows and I looked over and Dirk Bentley was there and he was, you know, opening up his, uh, his new spot. So 
Uh, but they also play um, music videos on, on big screens there, all like the new Honky Tonks have it. And there's a rotation and uh, about summertime. And the Virgin Island plays there, you know, three or four times a day and all those Honky Tonks down there. And um, so I've got, I've got a lot of great friends and following. And the Virgin Islands are getting ready to go back next month and we'll be there for a week, you know, just playing nice. beach bars. So, nice. I mean, that's a dream come true. Absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I get to go, it's like a vacation, and I'm still working. So, right. um, you know, I, we do that now that they're back at least twice a, twice a year. So for those people that are in our audience are thinking about a trip to Nashville, talk about yeah. some of the best-kept secrets in Nashville that will no Ooh. longer be best-kept secrets. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a, an area called 12 South and Midtown, which is a, where, you know, people, I think, are starting to find out about it, but... Um, you know, there's a lot of cool shops and 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 restaurants, and um, you know, there's a whole area where there's just there's a bars, but they're not like honky tonk bars, so they're they're a little bit different. The one place there is called Losers, and if you're ever there, like on, um, I would say, you know, like a Tuesday or Wednesday, like an off day, you know, I mean, I remember I walked in there one time and Zach Brown was singing and David Grohl was playing. Uh, drums. In a place called know, Losers? In a place called Losers. I, I, My website is Winners, but there's Winners a, is Losers and Losers is Winners. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a local company, uh, Be More Around Town. They had a Ravens rally mm -hmm. there with a, a country ba a band. I the name it escapes me. me but, what? I was, I, so you're thinking about Low Cash Cowboys Low cash, that's, from two yeah, years yeah. ago. So I did, I did their um, okay. Be More Around Town this year. Okay. So, yeah. They do yeah. a fun, they're, they're so good. So they, they have uh, the whole parking lot. They fence in and then they put up a big parking lot party. That was a lot of fun. All right, you're gonna do so, another one, another song? Yeah, let's do Back to Baltimore since we're talking about All right, Baltimore. Back to Baltimore. You're gonna love this one, folks. Still remember the harbor lights shining like stars on a moonlit night. See them all in front of me. Makes me wonder why I've wanted to leave, yeah. Memories like my first kiss Saw riding there on a summer wind It's filling up my soul Can't take it anymore I just gotta go Back to Baltimore Hear the ships that coming in to pour Faces of people I adore It's harder to ignore I've never been more sure Back to Baltimore I feel my feet on the cobblestone Look up to see old Natty Bo He's winking his eyes about that makes me come alive, yeah. I hear the roar from Canvan Yards before McHenry standing guard over me. Oh, just take me home, never more will I roam. I just gotta go back to ball. Hear the ships that coming in to pour Faces of people I adore It's getting harder to ignore I've never been more sure Just gotta go Back to Baltimore So I'll drive alone I'm on my way Till I see the sun Chesapeake Bay Now I can Hear the ships Coming in to pour And I see Faces of people I adore It's getting harder to ignore Never been more sure Just gotta go Back to Baltimore Beautiful life here on the western shore, right here 
in Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. So back to Baltimore. What a fantastic song. Thank you. Thank so what, you. obviously there's a local inspiration, but yeah. what, what drove you to put that one together? You know, I, I think everybody that moves to Nashville, they miss, his, they miss home, you know, and you go through periods of time, and I, I was at that one of those periods of time where I didn't feel like my career was really doing the things that I was hoping for, and, you know, I was looking on Facebook, and I got my friends are doing this, I'm getting married, this is happening, and I'm just like, man, you know, I, I mean, I went to Towson University, I grew up in Ocean City, but I went to Towson, I lived in Baltimore for... Um, you know, a long time, and um, my father lived in Baltimore, so, you know, I got a lot of friends, and I was just missing them one day, and I said, um, I sat down with my buddy Goose, and I said, let's write a song about, uh, you know, going back home, you know, back to Baltimore. That's just got a great sound to it, so I wanted to give Baltimore its first country song, and I think it should play in all of the stadiums. If anybody out there can make that happen, let's do it. It should be. Or it's Great I mean Oriole State as, as everybody leaves, you know, and in the airport. As your uh, yeah, know, that's just yeah. my thought. <laughs> I like it. We'll get that going. And you played this guitar, which by yes. the way, this is Ed Rice, the, first the creator time. of this guitar. So talk a little about the history of that. You know, I know that there's a, a history of wood in that guitar, it's, it's and a lot of 150 something hours. Yeah, a little over 150 hours it, it, it took to craft this, bend the wood and thin the wood and cut wood and put it all together. But uh, I got the, uh, the, got the idea of a, uh, an old work associate and friend, uh, Tammy, Tammy Greiger. She does a lot of work down in Nashville and got to know Jimmy mm -hmm. somehow. And she said, Ed, you, I know you're building guitars. You need to get together with Jimmy. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, I can do that. And I read up and learned all about I Am Not Alone and, and Zero and the things that, uh, that Jimmy does and uh, kind of inspired me. I said, they need a guitar. so I. I yes. talked to Jimmy and I said, uh, if I make one and you sign it, I bet you can generate a bunch of cash for your, for uh, I Am Not Alone. And that's, that's what we're Absolutely. trying to do here. How so, long have you been making guitars, Ed? Been making guitars a little over 10 years. About uh, 2007, I was sitting in the living room and had an article about a uh, master luthier who teaches people how to make guitars. And uh, he'd been doing it for 30 years, made guitars for the Allman Brothers. Oh, right. Way. This guy that taught wow. me. And I uh, put the put the magazine down and made my wife a wonderful cup of coffee and she picked up the magazine and says, you need to do that. And I'm like, really? I'd love to do that. Kind of go out to California and learn. She goes, well, call a guy up and do it because when you retire, you're not following me around the house. <laughs> so so uh, I got into it and I went out there for two and a half weeks and built my first guitar and it just became my passion just like overnight. I just love yeah. it. I just and you go can tell. my shop and I just sit there and turn on my music and Play with wood. He, he is. Uh, he, he always keeps us up to date. So th this is the first time we've seen it today. This is the first yep. time I've been chomping at the bit to play it and see it. And uh, but he, you know, throughout the entire process, um, he sends pictures and videos of, okay. of what he's doing, and and uh, you get to see the creation, which I've never, you know, seen that process. So it's it makes you, I think, I'm, it's going to have a tough time getting letting this one go. But it's for a good cause. So it's for a great and right cause. now. It's me. Um, you know, it's valued around thirty-five to to four thousand dollars. It's the only one of its kind for I Am Not Alone, and we have um, we haven't even really started the bidding yet, but we already have sixteen hundred dollars on the nice on the bid, and that's that's gonna that's all gonna go to I Am Not Alone, one hundred percent of it. So mm -hmm. we uh, can't thank Ed enough. So Ed, you mentioned prior to coming on that there's like four or five types of wood, yes. maybe even more. In that guitar, Correct. so so talk about the place around the world where the wood came sure. from, and, uh, and and why do you do that? I mean, why couldn't there be a block of wood down the street that would be be just as good? Well, guitar wood is more commonly called tone wood, because some woods have tone or vibration to them, and a lot of woods don't. Okay, so you just thump on it, like this chair, it's just a thump. But you top on this, it's a totally different sound. And, you're listening to the vibration coming through the wood. And like most people know, or maybe don't know, uh, the guitar, when you hear it play, it's the wood you hear, not the strings. Mm -hmm. The strings are just vibrating, and you're actually hearing the wood. So uh, this wood, the, the top of this car, top of this guitar is Sitka spruce. It comes from Craig, Alaska. So it's, uh, it's milled from uh, the uh, Sitka, Sitka forest up there. And How did you know to trees? go there for that? 
Uh, I have a friend who actually has a has a lumber mill up there, and that's okay. where I, he supplies my tops. All so right. the back, which you'll see, has wonderful grain. It's really pretty. It's beautiful. The sides and the back. This is koa wood, K-O-A. The only place in the world it grows is in Hawaii. And this wood came from Hilo, the forest outside of Hilo Hau on the Big Island. Um, the neck is mahogany, which comes from South America. Uh, the, uh, the binding, the end wedge, and the little piece of wood back here, it's called the cap, is cocobolo, which comes from Mexico. And uh, see here, the bridge and the fingerboard are ebony, and that comes from Africa. It's a black wood. It, it, it grows in, mostly in Africa and some in, in India. So when I have suppliers in all parts of the world that ship me their wood, uh, both in the, in the country and then outside the country. So your work, 150 plus hours, yep. and Jimmy's work to get it out there and the mess, send the message, yeah. $1,600 we've got so far? Yeah, and we really on, haven't folks. even, I mean, Come on, folks. we just put, he just finished it, so, you know, it's just been kind of like the, the process. We haven't really said, okay, we're going to start, just kind of put the last uh, picture that he sent me. This is the first time seeing it in person. Um, so if you guys want to um, do a bid, get Where on Where are Facebook. you accepting? Is it just on so Facebook? We're gonna, or? Uh, we're going to do it at, at some, some different events, um, but I think it's going to be a, a, an ongoing process for for a few, several weeks um, online so people can go on the I Am Not Alone Facebook, like that page anyway. We're doing a lot of great things for, for people and you can see what this will actually turn into um, and the efforts it'll make. And on my Facebook, Jimmy Charles, uh, you can send me a private message and um, you know I'll get back with you. And, and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get a lot of money. It's gonna do a lot of good and somebody's gonna be really happy to have a beautiful guitar with wood all, from all over the world. And, Really good stuff. And my man Ed Rice. And, and if great. you can't play, bid on it anyway because somebody in your family probably does. Exactly. <laughs> or he'd, he'd be a great, great learner. Yeah. Absolutely. Great learner guitar. So. Great cause, great story. Speaking of great stories, you have one with American Idol. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, that was about two be an years experience. after. It, was, it probably took a few years off my life. I really? can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, was, it was kind of one of those things where I was. Wisp, wisped away. It was. I was in Nashville for uh, about a year and a half at that point in time, and I was playing pretty regularly uh, downtown. And um, I tried out if, along with 110,000 other people all over the world. And um, during my audition, I had uh, Posh Spice was my um, with Victoria Beckham was my uh, my judge, the, the guest judge. You know, you had Simon mm -hmm. and Randy and Cara there as well. Does she know um, anything about music? Who? Which one? Posh. Oh. Um, she's not uh, she touring with them now. She said she liked me, so I'm going to go ahead with yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I didn't sing her any Spice Girls, though, but um, uh, Ellen Generous was my year. Okay. So, and the funny th it's funny that you say that because everybody was always, they were arguing, they were like, why is Ellen DeGeneres on American Idol? What, she's not a musician, she's, you know, why is she there? And I know why she's there, because she has millions of followers, right. and if she's on, she, all of her followers are going to watch the show. It's all about ratings. But um, when you're on American Idol, and we were during Hollywood week, you constantly have cameras on you all the time. So you really have to, you know, watch what you're doing, because all of a sudden, like, you're out of the corner of your eye, there's, you know, some guys creeping up with a, with a camera and everything you say, you know. But uh, we were all sitting there in Kodak Theater one time, and every, all of a sudden, all the... Um, all the cameras were gone. There was no boom mics hanging over our heads or anything. And we're just like, this is weird. What's, what's going on? And out comes Ellen DeGeneres. And, um, and she was great. She was just always smiling, just like you, you see on television. And uh, she was like, hey, guys, I wanted to tell you and just kind of address, you know, what the media is saying and everything. Um, and, you know, about me not really not knowing you know, music and things like that. She's like, I get it. I was like, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm, I'm tone deaf. So, and we're all just like sitting there. It was like, we were in the biggest singing competition in the world. And she's tone And deaf. you can't tell whether we're singing on key or not. And she's like, but I'm going to judge you on your charisma on stage and your presence and this, that, and the other. And we're all just dumbfounded. We're like, okay, Ellen DeGeneres, like what, whatever you think. And it wasn't a joke. And, and we were all just looking at each other. But then all of a sudden, as she's walking up, she turns around and goes, ah, gotcha. <laughs> so, um, and we were all like, okay, thank God. 
So um, I was going to say what, she's what, always what, dancing what, on her shows and everything. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, she's got she's got some moves. I don't I don't I don't think she can sing, but uh, you know. <laughs> Speaking of other singers, Lady at the Bellum. Montgomery Gentry, Kit Moore, mm -hmm. some others that you've opened for. Talk about that yeah. experience. Um, those are the moments that you, you you hang in there for, you know, and the, the ones that you're like, okay, this is why I sang in that empty bar room, you know, to nobody, because now I get to step in front of five, 6,000 people, you know, or, or a thing like American Idol where it's 42 million people. So um, if there's a lot of excitement, you know, you get to... These are people that you know I've looked up to. Merle Haggard. I mean, come on, it doesn't get better than that. Um, recently, I just opened for Josh Turner, not too long ago, like we talked about, and um, it's a great feeling to walk on that stage and 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 hear you know people just cheer for you because you know how much goes behind getting to that point, you know, and it's certainly not something that was ever handed to me. It was something I had to work for. So, you know. Anytime I have a moment like that, I go, I, I, I take a little time to myself and I, I'll go to, you know, we'll have a green room or, or wherever we are and I'll just kind of lock myself in the bathroom and have a moment, look in the mirror and, um, you know, smile and just be proud and, uh, and embrace the moment, breathe so you're not getting too nervous so you can perform well and then uh, it's kind of just like, let's go get them, you know. You mentioned playing in, a, in an empty bar. Mm -hmm. And I've been in bars like that, listening, because I am a big fan of music and listening to these guys that I think are great players. And people are having their little conversations, not even paying attention to the guy. Right. What is it that keeps you going? I mean, because it's like, they're not even listening yeah. to me. I, I could be playing off mm -hmm. key and nobody even knows or cares. So oh, what, yeah. what kind I've, of thoughts go through your head? Well, it, you know, there, sometimes it pisses you off, yeah. you know? I mean, but you've got to, you know, you've got to learn to, to control that because, like I said, that's why you do those so that you have these other moments that are great. And, and to be honest with you, you know, that's where you really can perfect your craft. I mean, you don't, you don't just go from your, your, your stool or your couch in your, or in your bedroom to big stages. You get out there and you play, and people, some people are going to be all into it. Some people are not going to care, could care less. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, when I did open for Merle Haggard, there was like 20,000 people, I think, and uh, I sold out of all my CDs. I literally signed autographs for two and a half hours after, um, after that performance. And um, two days later, I was back in Nashville singing at a Margaritaville right downtown, and uh, you know, people wouldn't put their french fries down to clap for me, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I didn't sell any CDs. So it's just like, and I was still singing the same, it was just, right. you know, when you're put on that stage, it's like, you know, you've got people's attention. You're able to connect with them. Um, and when you go back to the bars or if when you're in a bar, people are, he's just a bar singer, you know. So it's a, it's a lot of mentality on their end. But I think it's more important as an artist to keep control of your own, you know, mentality. Because there's a lot of people that go nuts. Right. <laughs> you know, the, right. the music business is... I mean, show me a crazier business. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a whole lot of roller coasters, man. And you just gotta you just gotta hang on, hold on, and and try to embrace the moments and the moments that aren't there. Work on getting better. You can never stop getting better. You mentioned selling out CDs at the Merrill Haggard concert. Mm. You got a new CD coming out. Yeah, we just Let's talk about just that dropped a bit. Hard Way to Go. So just finished up in Warner Brothers Studios. Um, had a great producer, Paul David. Um, really put his heart into it. You could tell. Um, you can tell when I, just like Ed, when, when I could tell he, how much he was putting, he wasn't just making a guitar, he was making something he was proud of. That's, that's how I felt working with, uh, with Paul, just the, he would just be like smiling and just into it, you know, it wasn't just a job, you know, it was uh, and something that he's very proud of and, you know, the music is, is getting out there and, um, you know, there's, um, the other song I'm going to perform is um, Hard Way to Go. Um, Hard Way to Go is a, uh, is, is a song about addiction, um, and it is, uh, it's very special to me. It's not about me. It's, you know, I, I never met my biological father because he was an alcoholic, and uh, fortunately I was, um, I was adopted by the man I call, that is my father, that was my father, um, and never, I never questioned that, but, um, you know, it's a sad thing that a lot of people get wrapped into, and there's a lot of sad stories out there, and, and Hard Way to Go, I think, is a... Uh, 
it recognizes that. And although it's kind of a sad song, it's also an empowering song that I think allows people to say, hey, you know, this is a hard way to go. It's okay that it's that it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's okay to step forward and take two, you know, two steps forward, take a step back, you know. Um, so it's it's a very really powerful song. There's there's so much. There's a little bit of me in every one of these songs. The first one's a rock and beach tune called Blue Spaces. I wrote while I was in the Virgin Islands and um, or started it there. Then, then I finished it back here in Nashville. But it's not like a, you know the sun goes down type of uh, laid back song. It's rocking in your face. Let's party. She's where I belong. I wrote for my fiance and. Uh, of course, that's her favorite song. And um, then, you know, I've got Superman on there, I'm Not Alone. Of course, that's for all the cancer survivors. And uh, Rolling On is probably a song that's uh, closest to me because it's about my journey. Just like we talked about, you know, it's about being on the road. Um, it's about the grind. And it's about uh, keeping, keeping going when you're, you're just like so, you feel like you're just beating your head against a wall. You know, um, you got to power through those moments moments and I think that even though it talks about my experiences with with music you know we all go through times in life where we have to just keep rolling on right so yeah so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and it has gotten all five-star reviews from um, you know all the uh, the industry bloggers and uh, you know all the people that we sent it out to so from LA to New York to to Nashville so Great. it feels good especially it's always scary when a stranger you know is going to judge you, you know, that doesn't, it's not like, here, listen to this course, they're going to say it's good, but when you send it off and you get something back, you know, but it's, it's all, it's all been very, very positive, so, and it's on iTunes and Apple Music and Spotify and Pandora, so everybody can stream it, we're, we're living in a streaming world now, we are, you know, it's going to stream, so add it to your playlist. Well, you're an inspiring guy on multiple levels, thank so you, thanks for joining us today here yeah, on Music Fanimal. Ed, pleasure having you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Does she have a name? Well, I mean, kind of, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. That's, you know, we have to think of it. Okay. I think so. You know, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot behind it. So. That's right on there. Good stuff. Yep. All right, so you got one more for us. I do. Thanks for joining us know. today on Music Fanimal. One more from Jimmy Charles. Mama taught me about the Bible Daddy taught me about the bottle And I learned a thing or two alone The lies made me struggle The truth made me humble Fighting feels like grinding on a stone Unless you live like Jesus lived Some sin are hard to forgive Cause there are stray roads and winding roads and ways to get lost There are wrong turns that have their prices and you never know the cost When the devil's always pulling at your so the right way is the hard way to go I'm really searching for peace haven't had a drink in two weeks but I quit for two weeks before I found a church to keep me straight and I been known to miss it some days but that's between me and the Lord I step forward, I fall back Mama said you can't get anywhere like that Cause there are stray roads and winding roads and ways to get lost There are wrong turns Never know the cost when the devil's always pulling at your soul. The right way is the hard way 
can feel my sins get washed away. Cause there are stray roads and winding roads and ways to get lost. There are wrong turns that had their prices and you never know the cost when the devil's always pulling at your soul the right way is the hard way to go the right the hard way to go mm-hmm.